And now moving on. So the next topic what we have is the dynamic one table. So this is a common way which most of the companies are adopting this one where we can create a separate table where we have the information about all the necessary requirement and then we can adopt the changes. So here I have a table where it contains all this necessary information. So you will see here we have this email ID, we have the country name, state name, city name and the category. Yeah, so the next four two topics we are going to discuss on the next video. But here um, we have this country name, state name and city name and as well as the category. So let's create a new role. But before to that, we had to enable that role, uh, the relationship between the tables. So this is the dim category table. Right now I'm just focusing on the category topic, not on the dim geography topic. So we have to create a relationship between these two one. I have selected here in the RLS import table to be the category and on the dim product category to be English product category name. So I want to filter whatever I'm going to select on this one. It has to filter on this master as well because this master has a relationship between the fact table. So it's going to filter the data in the chain process. So the cardinality which it behaves is we have many to one. So in this table we have many categories with the same name and at the bottom we have a dimension. So it's going to be unique values here. And I will make this relationship as an active and as well as the cross filter direction. So like I said before um, that if you enable this one then it's going to filter in both the ways. If you filter this RLS import table it's going to filter the team category. If you filter team category is going to filter the RLS import table. So in both the cases it's going to filter the data. So that's the reason and if you are using the role level security on your report then you make sure you have to apply this one apply security filter in both the directions. And now it gives you a message. The so dim product category is configured for a role level security introducing constraint on how the security filters are applied specified. So the setting for security filter behavior on relationships cannot be both. So why it is asking this kind of information, right? The reason is uh, if you're watching this video continuously that just before we created one relationship where we had similar issues that we need to turn this off, right? As you filter, uh, as you applied a role on dim product category, so here you are setting up to be dynamic one and there you are set up as a static one. So it actually collapsed between these two settings. So that's the reason we need to cancel this one. Let this be inactive first and then go to report and then manage roles. And we have to delete those roles because if you are keeping a static one, then keep just static one. If you are using a dynamic one, then just keep the dynamic one. So don't mix up of both the things. So clicking on this one and then manage role, I will delete these two roles as well. So this one is a static one I will click here and then delete and static two click here and then delete. So now we have this dynamic table which I will come in few minutes. So clicking on this one and then click on save. So once after deleting these two uh, roles here, let's come back to this relationship here and then double click here so that we can make an active one. So here let's make this relationship to be active and I will click on apply security filters in both directions. You see now we have not received any message for this one because there is no static rules available. So click on OK now. So these are the small small things which usually works when we start to work deeply on this Power BI tool. So now this is active and now our next step is to go to modeling tab again and then manage roles and we have to create a new role which is a dynamic one table. So here we instead of filtering on the dim category table because that's what we have made the relationship. We have to go to this table which is RLS import table. So this is the table what we have where we have email address and all the other informations. And here what I have used here to be lower RLS import table email ID which is a column name of that table equal to lower user principal name and open and close bracket and then close this one. So there are two things here. One is what does this user principal name returns. So usually user principal name returns your email ID. So wherever the user logs in, in Power BI service it's going to return an email ID. If you're testing in Power BI desktop then it's going to return you this your laptop, I mean your computer name not your email ID. So it will not work on your desktop, it is going to work only in Power BI service. So that's one thing and why it is applied as a lawyer is basically sometimes whenever we set up an Azure Active Directory in Power BI service 
it's going to mess on those two things and we have some case sensitive issues. So to, in order to avoid that, so I'm just converting the user principal name also to be lawyer and the data what we have on our table to be lawyer. So we may not have any issues with uh, uh, case sensitive issues. So that's the reason and then click on save. So once you do so, on the right side, I have created one measure. Just you want to show you this one, user email. So even though I have used user principal name here, like what we are used on the row level security window, but it actually returns the company, I mean the laptop, my laptop PC name, which is adnan-pc slash hp, which is my hp laptop. Basically that's the computer name. That's my laptop name, it's returned here. So here I have this name and in the RLS table I have my email ID. So it's not going to match, so it will be a blank report for me. So that's the reason I need to publish this report into Power BI Storage first and then I need to enable that role of security over there and test this feature. So let's do it quickly. I have already published this report into Power BI Storage but still how you want to see this one you can just click on the home tab and then click on publish but you need to sign into your official account and it will give you the uh, list of available workspace what you have access and you can select any of the workspace and then click on publish. So this is the one which I have added here, Adventure Works TW18 and then RLS Basic. So first of all you need to click on this one and then click on security. But before do this one, if you are using your on-prem SQL Server or any of the Azure connection, you just make sure that you have set up your necessary settings before do that. Because if you are using an on-prem server then you need to use your gateway, Power BI standard gateway and you have to sync those data source connections in order to work the refresh and everything. And also, if you are using a Power BI service which is Azure connections, uh, Azure services, Azure SQL Server or Synapse SQL, anything like that, then you have to make sure that you enable that uh, credentials before doing all these steps. So clicking on security now. So we have this role which we have created which is dynamic one table and the two is basically says that we have assigned this role to two persons. So that's the reason it gives up the information here. and then let me open up an excel file where it gives the information about which user has which access. So first of all, um, if you see here we have given only access to two people. One is this Matraville clothing and Melson point. Alright, so these are the two users what we have, the first two. And here actually they have Australia, New South Wales and we are actually focusing on one thing which is the dynamic one, the clothing. So I can just copy here, he has an access only to the clothing and I can just add a username here and then click on add. So as I said earlier, so adding a single single user is not a best practice. We had to add the users in Azure Active Directory and then we had to create a group and that group we had to add up here so that we can easily maintain those users. So for testing purpose I can add one user manually here and then click on add and then click on save. So it's given to give you the access here. Now let's go back again to the workspace and then you have to click on this one, um, security, sorry it has to be on the same location. So here on the right side if you just mouse over you will get this three dot icon, you click here and then we have a test as role. So click on that, so being your, you are the report developer and you have the workspace access then you can just have a look into uh, on, behalf of, uh, on behalf of other users. So you can look the report on behalf of other users, you just need to click on here, now we being as this one, so we don't have to see anything here and then click here and just need to pass the email id of the person. So this is the email id which I copied from the excel and this is the name which is saved on our Azure Active Directory. So clicking on apply now, so now you see the report is generating and now you see everything and it is filtered only to clothing here. So this person has only access to the clothing so that's why we can able to see the clothing access here. So now let's try for another user with the category enable. Um, so this has to be for example this one United Kingdom bikes right. So this copy here first of all we need to go to the workspace and then give them the access. So clicking on this one and security and click here add. So this user is not available on my Azure Active Directory so I need to add that user. So let me quickly add that user into my Azure Active Directory. So this adding a user into Azure Active Directory is basically the responsible of the Office 365 admin. 
if you are an admin then you can make use of this how i am showing it right now if you are not an admin then you can just send an email to the admin he will add up those people and then you can just make use of that so click on new users in then we have to go to azure active directory and then click on users and click on new create new user and here i am going to add this user email id here okay so this is the display name and auto generate password click create a new and create i am just skipping all the other informations here because to speed up the process and come back again in power bi and then click on paste now we see this email id click on add and then click on save So this is how we can able to make use of dynamic one. Now we can able to see the data on behalf of other users, and but we don't need to maintain that. So if you have data in our table, and if we just apply give the access to this role for this particular AD group or the user, then he can able to see this data with the filters on to that particular access. So that's the beauty of the dynamic role level security. So these are the three things what we have discussed so far. One is a static one table, static two tables, and dynamic one table. and in further videos we are going to discuss about the other two one which are the complex one so it requires a separate uh, topic discussion separate time for that